Welcome to the Ashmolean Museum and the Viewing Art Mindfully podcast. My name is Ruth Collins and I'm a trained mindfulness teacher working with the Ashmolean. I would like to introduce you to the practices you will be doing today. We will begin with a mindful arriving and preparing to view practice. This will be followed by a talk from one of the curators from the Ashmolean who will guide you mindfully through a specially selected object from the museum. Coming to settle. Ideally, you will be sitting on a seat that supports you to be upright, relaxed, but alert, with your feet placed easily on the floor in front of you. If you feel comfortable about doing so, allowing your eyes now to close, otherwise letting your gaze drop and soften so that you are not looking at anything in particular. Setting an intention now to arrive fully by connecting with a sense of the body sitting. Perhaps you can feel the distribution of the body's weight on the chair. Let yourself be fully supported by whatever you are sitting on. Once you feel settled, just checking in with your position. You might want to adjust your posture slightly to feel more comfortable. It can be helpful to lengthen the back a little, relaxing your shoulders, opening your chest, tucking your chin in slightly to elongate the spine to allow for a smooth flow of breath from the nose or the mouth all the way down to the abdomen and back again. Now, bring your awareness all the way down to your feet with the intention not being to think about your feet, but to feel sensations in the feet. Notice the point at which your feet make contact with the floor the balls and the heels of the feet, the toes. Perhaps you can feel the toes lightly touching each other. Or maybe you can feel the texture of any material that's resting on the feet or the firmness of footwear encasing them. Allow yourself to gently and curiously explore each and every sensation that you can detect. And if you can't feel anything, that's fine too. Just being curious about this also. All the while, the mind will intrude and try to pull your attention away from the focus of the feet. Whenever this happens, as best you can coming back to simply feeling sensations in your feet once more. Now letting go of your feet, turn your attention to your seat, your buttocks, your sit bones, your thighs on the chair. Bring your awareness to the sensations of sitting the firmness of the chair beneath you, the point at which the thighs extend beyond the end of the seat, perhaps, the sensations of clothing in contact with the skin. Maintaining as best you can a simple, non-judgmental curiosity as you explore sensations of touch and pressure returning to the anchor of sitting whenever the mind tries to entice you away to think about something else. As soon as you notice this happening, bringing your awareness mindfully back to whatever sensations you can identify while sitting on the chair. Moving the attention away from sitting now, and shifting the focus of your awareness to your hands. 
Feel your hands whilst they're still. Perhaps the hands are resting on each other or laying on your lap or the chair arms. Just taking a moment or two to explore sensations wherever you notice them. A feeling of roughness or smoothness on the surface they are lying on. A sense of softness or firmness of touch. There may be skin to skin contact where the hands connect. A sense of the spread or closeness of the fingers and thumbs. Working from the tips of the fingers all the way through the hands now. The backs of the hands, the knuckles, the palms. You may feel coolness or warmth as the air lightly brushes over the skin. The mind will wander as minds do. Whenever this happens, patiently and gently returning your focus to the physical feelings and sensations of the hands. Letting go of the hands now, bringing your awareness to your upper body and to the sensations of breathing. Not needing to change how you're breathing, but just tuning in to the natural rhythm of the breath that is already there breathing for you. Notice how the abdomen gently rises and falls as you inhale and exhale. For a moment or two, just focusing on following one breath all the way in and one breath all the way out. Perhaps being aware of a slight pause between the breath as you breathe in and the breath as you breathe out. If the mind drifts away or gets caught up in thinking, simply drawing your attention back once more to the anchor of the breath and the body sitting here breathing. With full awareness of the body sitting here, right now, and whilst continuing to keep the eyes closed or the gaze softened, gently expanding the spotlight of your attention to become aware of sensations in the body as a whole. Perhaps you feel the body moving slightly with the breath, a slight rocking or swaying or points at which the body makes contact with another surface, a slight tingling sensation, the coolness or warmth of the skin. Widening your awareness further, perhaps you can detect other things through the senses too. Maybe you can hear sounds around you Sounds near and far. Keeping the focus on the aliveness of your senses, preparing to open your eyes now, ready to bring your full attention to the work of art presented in front of you. Looking at this sheet of paper, we can see the strong lines and marks made in charcoal by the artist, as well as lighter traces. A stick of charcoal is a lovely drawing material, which you can use with strong pressure to give dark tones, and more gently for fine touches. It can be fairly sharp, or thick and blunt, to make different kinds of marks. The natural cream colour of the paper creates a sense of light, it becomes luminous when contrasting with the dark charcoal. There are deep, warm areas where you want to reach out and feel the velvety qualities of the material with its soft, dark textures.
Here, some images emerge quite clearly on the sheet of paper. They emerge from the movements of the artist's hand as he holds the charcoal and works on different parts of the paper. Even though the drawing was made by Raphael over 500 years ago, like any drawing, it has an amazing effect of intimacy. We are seeing the artist's ideas taking shape as his hand and his imagination are in tune. This is not a finished work of art, polished and complete. Instead, it is coming into being before our eyes. We can follow the process, imagining the artist thinking and capturing those thoughts using gestural movements. Look at the diagonal parallel lines, where we can feel the rapid, repeated strokes of the charcoal. Look at the barely visible, swirling, curved marks at the other side of the sheet, where we can imagine the swinging movements of Raphael's hand. We can sense the different textures of the material, sometimes grainy, sometimes sharp, sometimes earthy. Let's just note that the sheet has been cut down a bit by a later collector, including cutting off the corners at the top. It would have been a rectangular sheet of paper when Raphael picked it up. We can recognise some images quite easily. A seated man stroking his beard, wearing heavy robes and holding a large book, takes up most of the space. A lot of attention is paid to this figure. There are layers of charcoal here. Over to the left of the sheet, there is a much larger head of a bearded man. It's full of character and personality, even though the sketch is quite minimally handled if we compare it with the powerful handling of the seated figure. Down to the right, beside the seated man, just beneath his book, the squiggles and touches of charcoal suddenly turn into a little child with wings. He is grinning quite cheekily and endearingly, and he seems to be very relaxed, lounging, maybe with another child beside him. There are suggestions here of shapes, like a head with some wild hair. If we look lower down on the sheet of paper, we can see some nearly circular marks, like little crisp curls. There's a real sense of spontaneity here, perhaps even pure pleasure in drawing, as improvisation takes over. Look at the overlapping profile heads that merge with these curling marks so that we can see indications of ears. These two profiles, again of an elderly bearded man, have an air of caricature. Compared with the grinning child, they go to the other extreme of elderly severity. Drawing here is about doodling, letting thoughts run freely through the artist's experienced hand. But notice then what happens. Another, much more carefully drawn profile head, beside the two overlapping forms, is completely different. It's as though Raphael has paused for reflection, then created this new character, quite gently and softly, but really pinning down his thoughts. He's put pressure on the charcoal to give salience to the ear and the eye socket, but he's also given a couple of little flicks there so that we can see maybe the eyelashes and surely the beetling eyebrows. This is what Raphael set out to do on this sheet of paper. He wanted to create a living, breathing character who would eventually come to life in full colour in a painting as part of a sacred drama. Here, the rhythm and pace of drawing allows him to generate ideas and develop them. It also allows him to enter imaginatively into the mood and emotions of the character, the actor in the drama that he is creating. The drawing took quite a while to make, allowing the artist to use his empathy to explore a personality and to create an expressive form. Where did Raphael start to draw on the sheet of paper? He started laying out the seated man using the charcoal lightly with sweeping strokes. We can see how he imagined the robes as swirling out more to the right, or the head in a slightly different position. Raphael is thinking about St Paul. 
one of the most forceful personalities in early Christianity who was killed for his beliefs. Paul had persecuted Christians before undergoing a dramatic conversion through a divine vision. So Raphael wants to bring out ideas of courage, authority and wisdom and of divine approval, but also the complexity of Paul's character. The classical robes he is wearing have to communicate these ideas as well as his features and his contemplative pose. The way that the costume is draped around his body gives a sense of majesty as well as conveying physical presence. His bare muscular arm evokes his physical and mental strength. At this stage, Raphael reconsiders St Paul's features in the larger scale drawing at the left. Will he be more elderly, a bit more gaunt? Will he look upwards? And the cheeky winged boy comes in, I think, also at this stage as light relief for a few minutes in playful scribbles. In drawing, the artist can be adventurous. There will be cherubs in the painting, but they will not be so cheeky. Raphael moved downwards on the sheet then to think further about how you can make a profile of an elderly man truly expressive. The complete head study that he created at the left captures a different kind of personality, emphasising sensitivity and piety. Next, the artist went back to the main study to work it up. We can see that the strong diagonal strokes around the left side of the figure and the vigorous strokes in the area beneath his feet actually go over the head studies below and at the left. So this is where Raphael's main attention is. The other drawings can now be partly obliterated. This shading around the figure sets it off now. These strokes start defining the space occupied by St Paul, who now has volume. Raphael is using the tonal qualities of the charcoal to deepen the modelling, creating a convincing form. He used his fingers to rub some white chalk into the charcoal, softening some areas. He reinforced the profile. St Paul has strong features. His lips are slightly open and active. Overall, the graphic energy in the drawing and the empathy Raphael brings to the process are palpable. Together, they create an intense and powerful presence. <laughs>